This episode is sponsored by Realtor.com, who wants you to take advantage of your free profile on Realtor.com. By claiming and completing your free profile, adding a photo, and all of the information that puts you head and shoulders above the competition, you're on your way to receiving free leads, helping search engines find you, and staying top of mind with past clients. To learn more about claiming your free profile, go to realtor.com forward slash profile. Welcome to the Real View podcast, where Ohio realtors connect you to innovators and influencers, keeping you with the real view of real estate. Whether you're a broker, agent, first time home buyer, industry leader, or just happen to stumble upon our podcast today, you can expect to hear tips, tools, tricks, interesting information, and so much more from the experts in Ohio's real estate game. Welcome back to the Real View Podcast. I am your host, Allison Wiley. Joining me today, our special guest, Paula Montover. She is a highly sought out national speaker, strategic planning consultant, and national leader. She has been an active realtor since 2002. She was the 2017 president of Arizona Realtors and the 2017 AZ Realtor of the Year. She was the region's sixth vice president for NAR in 2019 and is the owner of both the Focus School of Real Estate and Academy of DOM. She has been honored with Northern Arizona Association of Realtors Distinguished Service Award and their President's Award, as well as the Distinguished Service Award from Arizona Realtors. As a passionate community leader, she was proud to be chosen for the Flagstaff Chamber of Commerce's Young Athena Award. In 2022, she received the Heart of Safety Award from the Beverly Carter Foundation for her tireless work promoting realtor safety. And all of that to be said, most people also know her as Sam's Mama, which when I was reading this bio, that was such a sweet way to end your bio. I love that. Oh, thanks, friend. Yeah. Did you read the other bio too? That's the funny one. Yes. And I went back and forth on this when I was preparing this morning and I'm like, which one should I read? Should I read them both? (laughs) Right. No, totally. But that one was, that one was way more fun and like down to earth, which is like, I probably should have read that one, but you just never know. (laughs) You know, the reason I have both of them is that sometimes people need one. Sometimes people need the other, but you know, when you're like, it was a sweet way to end it. I'm like, for me personally, and this is just me, I feel like I've never listened to a person's litany of experiences and awards and been like, well, now I'll pay attention. (laughs) Oh, they got that award. Well, now, now I'll pay attention to them. You know, always been more like, are they a human that cares about other humans is more, more for me, you know what I mean? But I used to only send the funny one. And then I had people ask me, Hey, can we have a actual bio for you? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I wish we could be more, you know, just real and, and casual and fun. And I love in your other ones about the pasta eating. Like I was like, oh, I want to bring that up and ask her about this. (laughs) I love that. This pasta connoisseur, because that sounds like my kind of girl. (laughs) Well, I really, you know, and we're talking about wellness today. So this fits right into the topic. I think it's really important to know what fills your bucket. And for me, it is absolutely pasta, good pasta, not crap pasta. And I put in my, in my funny bio that I'm a pro level pasta eater. Yes. (laughs) That's just in my head. That's not, and people come up to me and they're like, how do you become one? I'm like, you just write it down. (laughs) <laughs> you have to do, you just, you just write it on a piece of paper and then people say it and then you can decide what you do from there. <laughs> I love that. Just write it down and eat a lot of it. Maybe like <laughs> believe it in your heart. You know, <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, well, okay, great. Um, I, well, as you mentioned, we're here to talk about wellness. We're here to talk about stress. Uh, we all know what that looks like working and, in, in living and breathing in our industry, um, how we manage it, how we can do better at managing it, how it's impacting us, how it's impacting our business. But before we get started into today's topic, I would love to hear a little bit more about you aside from the boring bio I I chose to read. I would love to hear a little bit more about you and, and who you are, how you got started in the industry. Tell us about what's led you to where you are today. Thank you, beautiful. And, and honestly, like I am, I am proud of all that work that was done, and because of the people that I got to meet, and like I, I am truly proud of all the all the things in my boring bio. I just don't think anybody else cares. Like that's that's it's not. I'm proud. Like I like my story, but yeah. <laughs> yes. So I grew up in New Jersey. 
which now that I live in Georgia, that is second date information. You do not find that out upon first meeting me or a wall goes up and you think that you know me because you have seen Real Housewives of New Jersey and you have watched Jersey Shore. And so I let them know that I'm from Arizona. So I lived in, I grew up in New Jersey. I went to Rutgers College and then I traveled uh, around the country and fell in love with Northern Arizona. And so I moved there in 2001 And I moved to Flagstaff two days before 9-11. I didn't know anyone. And after about two weeks there, I met some friends and got my little circle of humans. I had had a job set up for myself before I moved out there to be a bartender. So I bartended my way through real estate school, got my real estate license in 2002, and then still felt like, as I'm sure many humans do that might be listening to this, that real estate school did not teach me anything about real touring. And I was terrified, like absolutely terrified that they're like, you're going to let me go and handle hundreds of thousands of dollars. And people like, <laughs> that doesn't seem right. So I took a job as an office manager of a real estate office because I just felt like I needed to learn more. And in that process, I wound up getting mentored. And within about two years, I started mentoring and teaching other people. And I really, really love reminding people how of worth we all are. Like, I think that that's really easy for us to all forget teaching people a little bit something new or getting them to look at something maybe in a different way that they haven't looked at before, especially themselves, and setting them back out into the world. And so through the process of beginning to teach for my office, and then I spoke for a local school where I made $17 an hour as a teacher. (laughs) And then I traveled around. Arizona is a very big state. (laughs) And I drove all around it teaching and speaking for a long time until I met Joanne Fosland. And she said to me, you're making how much an hour? Um, And I told her, and then she said, oh, no, 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 no. Here's what we're going to do for you. And she was one of my first really big mentors. And for many of you, um, you might remember Joanne Foslin. She's been an amazing coach and national speaker for a lot of years. And she really took me under her wing. And then the next person that took me under her wing and never let me go and continues pushing my back (laughs) forward all the time is Barbara Freestone, who's the vice president in charge of professional development for the Arizona Realtors. I met Barb in an elevator at a conference and this conversation's hysterical. I met her and I had been stalking her on social media because I knew that I wanted to network and meet people. And so I knew who she was when she came into the elevator. And I said, hey, you're Barb Freestone. I'm so excited. I wanted to meet you. And she said, what's your name? And I said, Paula. And she said, how did you know who I was? And I said, well, you know, I'm kind of a s'more. And she said, what is that? And I was like, oh my God, why did I say that word? Now I'm going to have to tell her what it means. And it was a term, this is like 15 years ago. Was, I said, well, it means social media whore. <laughs> and this is literally my first conversation with this woman ever. And now she's one of my closest friends and she has been an amazing mentor to me. Um, she saw abilities in me and really took the time to invest in every way she possibly could in me as a leader and as a speaker and a trainer. And I have the life that I have and enjoy the career that I do as a speaker, as you mentioned, 100% because of the efforts and the time that she put into me. And so I know it's my job to put that time into other people too. I try. I love that. And is that kind of one of the reasons why, and in reading your bio and your involvement that you've been so involved. I mean, went through the journey of leadership, you know, was a past president. Is that kind of why you wanted to become more involved? And from your perspective, kind of what's the importance of being involved in your association and and moving up that chain of leadership? Okay. I love this question because my (laughs) answer is not altruistic at all. (laughs) And I know that that's what everyone's expecting is like, oh, Paula's so sweet. Why did she get into leadership? Honest to goodness. The reason that I got into leadership is because I was like, those people are really freaking smart and they seem so cool. And I want to hang out with them. That is it. Like, it wasn't like, I'm going to be a bit like, I, I lead leadership sessions where I ask people their why, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's always like, I want to help people. And, you know, I want to be a good person or because I was pushed down or, you know, all these like beautiful reasons. And for me, it, it honestly, if I'm being real, it was because I saw these incredibly dynamic, brilliant humans and I just thought, I want to hang out with them. I, I want to be in that crowd. Why it's important for people to get involved and why I continue to do it is because being on that inside track and getting to actually help shape our industry for humans you'll never meet. So if you're serving at a national level, you're serving 1.5 million. How many realtors are in Ohio? 
We have 36,000. Oh my gosh, 36,000 people. If you're serving on a state committee, you're helping 36,000 humans that you're not going to meet. You're not going to meet all of them. And that is really, really addictive because it actually does make a difference in the day-to-day lives of so many people's business and their careers and their professions. And when you realize that you can make that positive impact, it really does become addictive. And then again, that was altruistic, but this one's not altruistic. When you are volunteering, you're one of the first in the know, which means you're one of the first to be able to adapt and adjust your business to whatever changes are coming down the pike long before anybody else even sees them coming because you're with an elite group that's checking that out ahead of time for you. They've done studies recently and they've shown that when people are volunteering in their industry, that they tend to be, and we already know this, anybody that volunteers know this, they tend to be the cream of the crop. They tend to be the people that are also excelling in the business side of their industry, which I think is makes all the sense in the world from what I've seen and the caliber of humans that come forward. There's also something to be said about, and this kind of goes back to my first reason about wanting to hang out with the cool kids that were so brilliant. <laughs> There's something to be said for hanging out with the people that want to serve others and that want to give their time to help other people. Like that's just a really good group of people. I talk to a lot of my friends who are in other industries because I have like three. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> But they always talk about how difficult it is to make friends. And I'm like, I do not have that problem. I really do, like you, you've got to try to have that problem in the real estate world. We consistently, and especially if you're attending your local, your state and the national conventions, you are surrounded by people who are the cream of the crop, who are taking the time to give of themselves, you know, away from their business, away from their family to help people they will never, ever meet. And yes, some of them might be doing it for a byline on their resume, but the majority of them are doing it because they genuinely want to do something good for others. And that is an amazing pool to fish for friends from. Yeah, I love that. That's a great perspective and a great way to look at it. And it just brings me back to what the superintendent of our real estate division here in Ohio has said. She says, you know, the complaints and applications that come across my desk are not from the people that are going to these events. They're not from the people that are super involved. They're not, you know, the people that are violating or getting in trouble with their license. They're not the ones who are super involved and are giving back and are in the know, as you said, about what's going on. No, it's those people that aren't. And I think that's just a testament too. It goes right along with what you're saying about Like you want to be around good people who are moving the industry forward, who are movers and shakers and who care about the work that they are doing. Um, Not only are they good at it, but they care about it. You know, getting involved and being on that leadership journey is a way to do that. So um, I love everything you said. Love that answer. And um, thank you for your contributions to um, our industry and for for everything you do uh, for us. Thank you. (laughs) Right back in your face, lady. (laughs) Thank you. This episode of The Real View is brought to you by the Ohio Association of Community Colleges. Ohio's network of community colleges provides accessible training that accommodates the busy lifestyles of aspiring real estate professionals at half the price of a traditional university. With convenient locations in every part of the state, as well as online options, Ohio's community colleges are your smart choice for pre-licensing education. For more details or to start the journey to a real estate career, Visit the education page at ohiorealtors.org and then click on the pre-licensed course locations. Okay, so I want to get into today's topic, which we touched on a little bit in the beginning, which is stress, getting stressed out, how we're managing it. Uh, We know we work in a highly stress-filled industry, right? We know what the world of real estate is like. We know, you know, we are busting our our butts every day to help our clients and and everything that we have going on. In your opinion, why is stress so harmful and why should we be really giving it some attention here, not only here today, but um, in the grand scheme of our lives? Oh yeah. Because it's, it's the silent killer, right? Like um, there's a book that I haven't read by the way, full disclosure, but I've (laughs) I've been told enough times to read called the body keeps score that I know personally that your body keeps score (laughs) of your emotions. Like, you can compartmentalize until literally until you develop a tumor. Like that is, that is what we can do to ourselves. Stress is a natural course of life, right? 
And you're right. I think that that we as an industry have gotten to the point where we're like, yes, we experience the stress, right? Like, we, yes, I have had the stress in my life. Like we will admit to that portion. What I think is interesting is I recently came across the definition of trauma and trauma is defined as stress for days on end, like basically like unrelentingly. And I would submit that you could also define a transaction that way. That's true. (laughs) That could also be a definition for a real estate transaction as stress on end, unrelentingly so. I mean, it's, and so it's actually, it's more than stress, it's trauma. And I think once we start using words like that, people are like, whoa, hey, hey, Paula, that's a, that's a big old word you're using there, emo, emo girl. I'm not quite (laughs) sure about that, you know? But these are definitions. I'm not making them up. I'm just pointing out that it seems to me that it applies. And when you start to look at it from that perspective and consider the fact that our business is dealing in trauma, like that's just, that is our business, right? Yeah. And that we're not really, we're not acknowledging it to that level, right? And then I'm just saying maybe perhaps we have a life outside of that business that also might be including stress to our lives. So I feel like we do a very poor job due to the armor that we think is protecting us of negating and not just acknowledging that we deal with trauma. I don't know if you've moved any time recently. Have you moved any time recently, Allison? Not in a few years. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, let me just tell, I mean, so, but that thank God is exactly where I'm going. Like it's yeah. awful. It is awful. absolutely freaking horrible. Okay. What we do to people, they need it. Don't get me wrong, but it is awful. It is so bad. Not knowing where your home is, is awful. I was a realtor for 20 years, living in my house, all happy as a clam. And then I moved myself on my own realtor. Transactions not going through because there's some second that the seller had paid off, but it's not showing as paid off. BS happening. Mm -hmm. Nothing anybody can do about it. Normally in these situations, I'm like, well, there's nothing we can do. You know, we might have to put your stuff in storage for a couple of days. We know we'll just have to figure this out. Now it's happening to me. I'm like, what the hell is going on? What the fork is happening? What the hell is happening me right now with that? Shut the front door. Like I am, I'm apoplectic because it's my family and it's my home. And that is called karma. No, I'm just kidding. No, I, <laughs> it's just, it's not karma. It's what it is, is it's life and it's reality. And going through it from a buyer's perspective, you know, at a time when there were only three houses on the market to begin with, really, really make me a better realtor and a better speaker on the topic because I can see it differently. And I think that for all of us that have been through a move recently, we get that. So it's like the perfect storm for all of the, all of the humans involved. And then most of our clients, they come in with their degrees from HGTV university and sure they're proud of that knowledge that they think they have and don't have, but it doesn't help things. And right now, just the sentiment and the overall kind of energy (laughs) in our society is one that I feel like people are not just screaming at each other, but they're standing on top of chairs screaming at each other. And I just feel like saying, hey, 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 that chair is for you to sit down. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like It's not, I feel like we're missing, we're missing it. And so when you combine all of these things together, I feel like it's very, very hard for the people in our industry. And all of those things that I just said, all of that is before we get into any of the national news. (laughs) Right. And then add lawsuits on top of that, right? (laughs) Right. And then let's add some lawsuits. Let's add some issues about sexual harassment. Let's add some concerns about how you're going to be making your money and what that is actually going to look like day to day. So (laughs) this is a lot. It's a lot. And, And again, I feel like we're really good at okay, well, that's happening. And now I'm going to go do this. Right. And so I was thinking about and preparing for this call, how good we are at compartmentalization. Like we excel. I mean, if we wanted to give a master's level course on compartmentalization and how to to make that work for you as a professional handling 25 other professionals to make it through, we could do that. We would sell, we would be able to speak fluently. We would have tips and tricks. We know all the ways we are so good at it. We don't even realize we're doing it. We're really, really good at the compartmentalization. So I was like, okay, so that we've got down, which honestly, to be fair, we need, like we need to have that. You can't 
feel all the feelings that you want to feel all the time. It's like, that's, you know, you can't have a breakdown on every corner. That's just not going to work for you or the drivers behind you or anyone, right? Like you've got to compartmentalization is always said in a negative way. And I just want to say like, that is a healthy part of life when it's done in check, but then you've got to do the opposite, right? Which I feel like we've never, we don't ever talk about. We only talk about compartmentalization. So I looked up what is the opposite? Because I don't even know. Like, what is the opposite of compartmentalization? Because I didn't, I didn't even know what it was. So the words are disorganize, disarray, untidy, and disarrange. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, that makes sense why we never go there, right? Because- <laughs> yeah. Who wants to be in disarray? <laughs> exactly. Like, I'm going to schedule a little time to disarray later. You know, yeah. like, hmm, that sounds horrible, but it makes sense, right? Like, that it's 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 so neat and tidy. It's neat and tidy to the point where it's hurting myself and it's not real. And I've got to let it be messy. I've got to let it be untidy. I have to let these emotions be in disarray at some point and not try to keep them in neat little squares and boxes. And so I thought that was, I like words. I'm a big word dork. And that kind of helps me to think about how to handle it and how to process it then. You know what I mean? We can't have breakdowns in every corner. I will say that I was going through some major stress in my life at one point. And I remember looking at my year at a glance calendar and being like, when can I have a breakdown? And also that, that does not work also. Like you can, that's the other, that'd be the other end of the compartmentalization. (laughs) This is a good week. Great week for a breakdown. I have nothing scheduled. Let's break down. (laughs) Exactly. When can I schedule a mental disaster? Like, is the end of April going to (laughs) work? Close to mid-year. I'm not sure. Like, And so like compartmentalization, can you can go too far with that. And then your body's just going to decide. So today, today is the day you're sick, you're tired, you're going to feel awful and you're going to break down because you can't do this anymore. Like your body will decide for you at some point. But I do think that if we can do this on a more regular schedule and get ourselves into the habit of letting ourselves be in disarray of with intention, unorganizing ourselves and letting ourselves be disorganized of with intention, letting ourselves be untidy with emotions. And I'm sure I have a funny feeling that you do this. I know I do this. Do you ever just like sit in your car after you get home and you're like, not yet house. Yeah. Or like I slow down when I'm pulling into my complex because I'm like, no, no, I don't want to be home yet. <laughs> not, not yet. Not yet. And it's not for any lack of love for the beings inside the home. Oh, right. Not yet. Not yeah. yet, home. I feel like these are the good moments to let ourselves go ahead and be a disorder, disarray, and let ourselves go ahead and be untidy. And maybe that's like driving around the block, driving to a park for a little bit. But I think the first step is to let ourselves be untidy is to ask ourselves how we're feeling and be honest about it. And this is the second part that's really, really hard. And it's hard for me because I'm super judgy of myself is not judge whatever I'm feeling, right? Like that's hard. Yeah. It's so hard, right? I was like, well, I should, I am, I should not be feeling that because I am an enlightened human. Right? I'm happy and healthy. My family's happy and healthy. Why am I letting this, you know, that feel we give to ourselves. <laughs> exactly. Like look at all these other things that are happening in the world that are real tragedies compared to whatever is processed. Like, yeah, comparing tragedies is never going to help anybody. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it hurts you, it hurts. That's it. That's all that matters, you know? And then if it hurts, that's also another one. You're like, oh, well, let me stop that. You know, like that's, maybe that's not judgment, but it's a redirection before we even (laughs) admit what direction we're actually facing. Yeah. So really letting yourself feel how you feel. And for me, sometimes that means I've got to like turn the radio down. It helps to put my hand on my solar plexus, take a couple of deep breaths, and then Sometimes it takes a little bit to to really hone in on what exactly it is. I'm feeling uneasy. Okay, why? What? What is it? Is it attached to something? Is it not attached to something? And really giving myself that time to feel it. You know, sometimes you'll know right away. You're like, well, I've been holding back thinking about this bitch. (laughs) That guy was a total dick. And now I'd like to think about it and scream and yell, you know? And then the other part of that too is, is when I said the scream and yell, like, I actually mean that. Like, if you're feeling angry about something, you need to let yourself feel it. And, and again, don't judge it. Like, don't judge. Well, well, I got angry about that, but I really shouldn't have because, you know, they've got a billion things going on in their world. And, and that's lovely that you can understand and have compassion for that human. You need to have some of that for yourself. If you're feeling angry, you need to just go ahead and let yourself feel angry. And here's the thing. It doesn't need to be 
and should not be a vendetta against that human. It can just be like, I'm like, literally, you can't see me, but I'm like shaking my hands and I'm, and I'm screaming and yelling, but like, let it be that visceral reaction and let yourself scream. And, sh- and sometimes, honestly, guys, it just takes like a couple of seconds, again, recommending your private space in your car where no one can see you <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> for this. But sometimes that's all it takes, but letting it out. And I think one of the best examples of this that I can give you is I was re- really, really freaking annoyed at my friend's kid, little kid, right? And I'd be like, I'm already in my head right now. I was like, you have no right to that. You have no right to that feeling. You should not be feeling that way. Like that's a little kid. You're, you're an awful person, whatever. And I'm going to get into it about why. Um, but I was just feeling super frustrated with this kid. It doesn't matter is the point. And so I just let myself go into a bathroom <laughs> and just like kind of shook and, you know, clenched my teeth a little bit and, and then I was fine. And then it was over and the moment was gone instead of trying to redirect myself or tell myself I shouldn't be feeling that because it's just a little kid, you know, it's wonderful to have compassion. It's great to big picture things out, as I like to say, and look at it, look at it from a big picture. All of that is wonderful, but don't lose yourself when you're rationalizing your emotions. Don't lose the compassion for the emotion that you had and make sure that you're just giving yourself that time to go ahead and feel it, really feel it, dive into the deep end of the pool of it and let yourself feel that because that's the only way that you're going to process it. And let it out. Like there's such a release that comes when you do that too. Like my body, like especially crying. And I try to like not cry. I force it. Like the last thing I want to do is like break down the tears, but then I do it and I'm like, I feel so much better. I should have just let it out. (laughs) Absolutely. It's so cathartic to do. And it's actually, there's like stress hormones that only get released when you cry. Um, It's really good for you. Like I'm, I'm one of those people where when I get angry in my mind, I turn into like a six foot tall, linebacker, like uh, seriously, like, I think I'm just huge. You know what I mean? Like that's, yep. that's what happens in my head. But actually what happens when I get angry is I usually start to cry Yeah, because that's how it's attached. I'm like, I'm not sad. I'm very angry right now. You know? I'm frustrated. I'm just so <laughs> angry at you. I'm trying not to throw punch you through these tears <laughs> right now, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so with that, like actually feeling your emotions. And then if it's bigger than those couple of moments in the car and you need more, just don't deny that to yourself. You know, be real about that. Talk to somebody about that. You know, the worst thing that we do is we leave things in our head and we think that other people look at them the same way, or we think that we're the only ones, right? And neither of those things are healthy. And I'm sure you've you've realized this, that you share it with somebody and all of a sudden it's not as big as you thought it was. They've heard it before. They still love you anyway, right? That's never what our brains tell us it is alone. And that's why, you know, we're not meant to do this life alone. Yeah. And our brains can be our own worst enemy in some ways, you know, with what I'm hearing you saying, just the guilt and giving ourselves into feeling a certain way, giving ourselves into not feeling a certain way. I mean, that ultimately can end up being harmful to ourselves and, and, to our mental state, to our physical state. And, and it's just crazy how it all combines into making us feel a type of way and how we all need to be doing better jobs at acknowledging that, working through it and just being kinder to ourselves. We, we all need to do more of that. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's I'm like, I didn't know that I was going to come here today and say, I need people to be more untidy with themselves. But that is truly what I think everybody needs is just stop trying to be so tidy. Like, I'm not telling you to be a walking mess. Don't get me wrong, but I'm just saying you don't need to be quite so tidy with your compartmentalization. I think, I think you need to be a little less tidy here and there for yourselves and take care of yourself a little bit with that. Yes. And it's okay to to have those moments. It's okay to have those breakdowns. You don't need to schedule them on the calendar, but getting that out is in our best interest and can do a world of good for us. Yeah, absolutely. And Hey, if it happens at a time that's inopportune, own it. Say, you know what? I'm going through a lot right now. And that is all you have to say. If you want to say more, you can. You do not have to. I'm going to need a moment. No one, no one on the planet is going to be like, no, I need you to sit here and work with me. Because here's the thing. If they have a heart, they care about you. If they don't have a heart, they just want you to shut up. So no one in that situation is going to is going to want you to stay there and work and not deal with what you need to deal with in that moment. And also to know that that is human, that that is not relegated to one sex or one type of person that emotions 
unbiden, unwanted, and uninvited will pop up for you sometimes in life. And that one of the best things you can do is be real and honest with yourself about how you're feeling. That is literally the first step of emotional intelligence is understanding how you feel so that you can, the second step, be able to manage your emotions, right? And handle them well so that you can you can be present in the way that you want to be. Yeah. And like you said, you know, we're all humans. We are all in this together. We are not alone. We are all experiencing the same emotions. We're not robots. We're not AI. We don't have, you know, no feelings at all. We are all the same and we all experience what comes along with being a human. So we're not alone and we need to be more okay with, with showing our vulnerable side and taking care of ourselves and of each other too. Super important. Oh my gosh. Yes, 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 yes. Yes to everything you said. (laughs) Being okay with being vulnerable, understanding that that armor is weighing you down. It's not protecting you. Well, um, I wanted to thank you, Paula, for for joining me, for um, just being yourself, for sharing your words of wisdom, your unique perspective um, on such an important topic. And um, thank you for your time, for everything. And I really enjoyed our conversation today. My gosh, I so enjoyed my time with you and I hope I get to hug you next week and I hope to everybody listening, whenever you're listening, I hope that you give yourselves time to be untidy and know that you are beautiful just exactly as you are. I love that. And we will end that there. Um, To all of our listeners, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We will talk to you next week. Thanks, guys. Thank you for listening to The Real View. That wraps up today's episode. You can keep up with the latest on the podcast at ohiorealtors.org slash The Real View and on Apple or Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Have questions, comments, or suggestions? We want to hear from you. Email us at podcast at ohiorealtors.org. We'll see you next time.